Men and brethren, people of the internet, in this video, I'm going to show you the easiest way, the simplest way, and the fastest way to cut and sew your very own shorts, aka Nika. <music> So I'm starting with my fabric on a fold. I'm showing you guys that it's on a fold, okay? Now, the first thing I did is from the top, I made sure I mark 1.5 inch. And from the side, I mark 1.5 inch. You'll find out why I did this one later, okay? So just make sure you draw those two lines from the side, 1.5 inch, from the top, 1.5 inch. Now, from that 1.5 inch at the top, I went ahead to mark my hips line at 10 inch at 8 inches you, you guys know that our hip line is like standard 8 inches so from the top i marked 8 inches for my hip line i also went ahead from the top i marked 10 inches for my crouch line if you don't know how to calculate your crouch line i have a detailed video here on this channel i'll leave the link in the description box so i also marked my crouch line at 10 inches and i drew a straight line you can see everything that i did here okay now i'm just here to tell you that from the top to that part is eight inches from the top to that crouch line is 10 inches i was telling you people again before you say i did not tell you okay now from the top i went ahead to take the length of my short and i took the length for this short at 22 inches now this short is for my cousin it's not for me okay and i cut this short i did not know she was going to wear it to an occasion and she was disturbing my life when i'm pregnant she pressured me till I sewed this cloth. Anyway, I'm glad I did. Don't mind me. Okay, so the length of the shot is 22 inches. Now, from that line, I extended my tape and I marked my hips. So your hips divided by four, okay? Plus one inch is allowance. So hips divided by four plus one inch is allowance. So what I marked there is 11 inches, okay? So after marking 11 inches at the top and at the at, till my crouch line, I connected a straight line. So from that crouch line... I marked three inches. I extended my tape and marked three inches. Okay. So after marking three inches, the next thing I went ahead to do, yeah, I'm just telling that the distance there is three inches. The next thing I went ahead to do was to connect my crouch line to my hip point. So I did this with my is it ambo curve ruler. If you have a French curve, you can do the same thing. Or you can use freehand. Okay. So I just connected it to form my crouch curve. Okay. So I've marked my crouch curve very easy, very straightforward. The next thing I went ahead to do is, at my crouch line, I came down by 3 inches. I want to mark my ties divided by 2. So second press of my tie divided by 2, I marked it there. Okay, in this case, that of my, my sister. Okay, and I also marked the same thing at the hem of the shorts. Okay, so after doing this, I used my ruler and I connected my markings together. Very simple, very straightforward. You guys, there are several ways to sew a shot. In fact, every day I keep finding out new ways, new, easier and simpler ways, okay? So from that point, I extended my, my tape backwards and I marked my waist measurement, okay? I marked my waist measurement and I drew a straight line upwards, okay? So after drawing a straight line upwards, the next thing I went ahead to do is from that point as well, I marked four inches, which is where our standard darts. You know, we always mark our dart at four inches. So I marked four inches there. You guys know that the waist. So before I explain, I also at my um, waist point, I extended the marking by one inch. You guys know that the hips is not exactly, the waist is not exactly straight. So I'm trying to form like a curvy waistline thingy going on here. Okay, so that's why I extended that waist point by one inch upwards. And I'm going to connect the dart point to my waist point. So we have a curvy waistline going on there. Okay, so now that this is out of the way, the next thing I went ahead to do was to connect my waist to my hips. So I connected my waist to my hips. You guys get a hips curve ruler. It will change your life. It will make you a brand new person. Okay, so I connected my waist to my hips. This is what we have going on here. You guys know that we already have 1.5 inch allowance there already. So we don't need to add extra allowance. So we are just going to add allowance to the waistline. So I added 2.5 inches for both sewing allowance and that allowance. Okay. And I just connected it to my hip line. Uh -huh. So that's what I did here. Okay. So you guys know that initially when we started, we marked 1.5 inch. So we already have 1.5 inch allowance both for the hips and for the crouch and for the whole sewing okay so at the hem i went ahead to mark one inch for my hem allowance that's you know the allowance you need to fold the hem 
yes i added i marked one inch and i connected everything together okay so this is what we have going on here for the front part after doing all this the only thing you just have to do now is to cut which is what i am doing here or which is what i did here choose the one you want okay so i went ahead to cut cutting is my best part when it comes to sewing so after cutting this is what the front part looks like very simple very easy very straightforward now to the back part for the back part we are going to use the front part to cut the back part okay so this is the, it's already the fabric is already in the fold so i just grabbed the front part and i placed it on the back part okay now at that my crouch curve i went ahead to extend it by 1.5 inch now in my inseam okay i just went ahead to extend it by 1.5 inch there okay around my inseam and i just connected everything together i went ahead to extend it by 1.5 inch are you seeing because of our tie and our bomb okay we need extension there right so i extended everything there by 1.5 inch now i marked that um where that my um crouch point started from or the crouch yeah the crouch point started from i marked that point okay you can see the line i drew a line there then i came in by one inch okay so after coming in by one inch i also marked it i drew a straight line there okay now the next thing i went ahead to do is at that my crouch curve you guys see where we have like that um, square there i just used my ruler and i got the middle and i drew a straight line there okay and i extended it by one inch some people extend by 1.5 inch some days i extend by 1.5 inch but today i extended it by one inch i marked it there okay now the next thing i went ahead to do is i connected all those points together huh I connected all those points together and we have a very see the crouch curve for the back is different from the one in the front the one for the back is a little um relaxed okay because of the bomb so that you won't have like gap or standing or puffy bumps seam around the bomb okay so this is what we have here for the crouch curve uh, for this short that's for the back part now from that point okay i extended it by 1.5 inch you guys know that we have the bomb bomb at the back so we need to extend it so you can accommodate the bomb okay then i'm going to connect it to that point in my front part okay i'm just going to use this and connect it to the front part huh? so this is what we have going on here very simple very straightforward okay you guys know that we came in by one inch to adjust the waistline so we are just going to add that one inch back so that everything will be precise and put together so which is what i did here i went ahead to add the one inch back okay and i'm connecting i connected my waistline to my hips okay i connected my waistline to my hip line so this is what we have here for the hip line for the waist and for the hip line for the back see guys cutting the back is even faster than cutting the front very simple very straightforward now the next thing i went ahead to do as well was to make sure that the the, the allowance that's the hem this the hem allowance you know that one we need for folding is also equal around the the hem of the back part of the shot so after doing this the next thing i went ahead to do was to cut the shorts okay i just cut it out and the uh, the rest is history <laughs> so you guys while we are cutting the back part let me know the struggles you have with your shorts okay let me know the struggles you have with your short and drop your struggles in the comment section maybe i'll do another short tutorial another style you know maybe all the ones you've been seeing they've been chaotic for you so after cutting the front and the back part I also went ahead. If you are hearing, bolo, 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 see, guys, I'm at home and my worker is around, so I don't know what to do again. You know, you push your manage, okay? Okay, so this is what the front and the back part looks like very simple, very straightforward, very easy, easy peasy, like you people used to say, okay? So this is what the front and the back part looks like again. I don't know why I'm showing you guys again, but, anyways, this is what it looks like. Now, this is what the front and the back part looks like again. <laughs> i had to show you guys or like on different backgrounds so you pull see it very well you can see the distinctive difference between the crouch curve for both the front part 
and the back part okay so that's the back part and this is the front part right so now it is time to sew this short okay now you the first thing i went ahead to do was to apply my forcible interface and this is because to prevent fraying, you know, you guys know that that thing needs to be tearing mm -hmm, when the seam is together. I put the forcible interface so to prevent fray. I'll be fraying so it doesn't tear unnecessarily. Yeah, so um, I took it over to my sewing machine and I joined the two pieces of the back part together and the two pieces of the front part together. Okay? Yeah, so after joining it together, this is the back part. I did the same thing for the front part. So after joining it together, the next thing I went ahead to do was to mark out my dart. You guys can see that that is already marked there. I marked my dart point, and this is what we have going on here for the dart. So I took it over to my sewing machine and I picked the dart. Now, you guys, I have a detailed tutorial on how to draft a short pattern. So you might want to check that out in the link will be in the description box of this video okay so i went ahead to pick my dart see guys picking that is very simple very straightforward as a beginner it will be tough but when you get into it, it it's it's not that tough okay so i picked the dart for both the front part and the back part of this short so this is what we have going on here now for the back we're going to have like this zip. You know that zip that you, when you sew it, it will be showing. Mm -hmm. That's what we want to do for this shot. So I went ahead to mark eight inches. Yeah, I marked eight inches around the crotch line. You guys can see how I placed my tape to mark it. You can see that I did not put any zip allowance, any extra fabric. So I'm going to show you one trick, something I always do when I'm being lazy to sew that fly zip. Okay. So I marked 8 inches. I'm going to mark it on both sides because we're going to open up the seam later on, not now. So you just grab any straight fabric you have. You can put forcible interface. Me, I did not. And you're just going to use that forcible interface to turn over the seam. You're just going to attach the forcible interface to the seam, right sides together. Okay? So which is what I did here. You're going to do it for both sides of the seam. You are going to cut two pieces and you are going to attach it to both sides of the seam. You can see how I am attaching it. Eh? That is how you are going to attach your own. I was, I'm, you can see I did not fast forward it. I was showing you guys so that you don't say, Ah, I doubt you. We did not see it. I am showing you. Open your eyes and look at it in Jesus name. Amen. Okay. <laughs> because some of you, you come and tell me, Oh, I did not see it. Oh, you did not show me. Or you come and be asking me in comment section. I think God beg you. This is 2024. I know they agree for anybody. Okay. Now, <laughs> I attached it to the seam, the crouch seam. Hmm? After attaching it, I did my back stitch, and uh, this is what we have going on here. I cut the thread off, then I went ahead to under stitch. You have warned me that it's not top stitch. I'm sure some people, if I say top stitch here, you will flog me. But some people don't understand under stitch, so I'm going to say two of them. I went ahead to under stitch, I went ahead to top stitch. Okay? So after doing this, I did this for both parts of the crouch, um, the crouch, you guys, the crouch seam, okay? So we have two pieces of this, so I did seam for both parts of the crouch, okay? Mm. You guys understand what I'm saying, because I don't know how to explain again. Now, the next thing I went ahead to do was I opened up the shorts. It is time to join the inseam together. If you don't know what all these terminologies is, check out the video on how to take crouch, how to take your trouser or shorts measurement. I explained all these things, okay? So I want to join the middle of these shorts together, okay? So I, I went ahead to secure it with some office pins, and uh, this is what we have going on here. So the next thing I went ahead to do was to join the middle of this shot together. Now, one trick is to join from the middle to the hem, okay? Not end to end. So you turn to the other side and join middle to hem, middle to hem, not end to end. Do you understand? It, it, it prevents that thing that one, one leg will be longer than the other. Uh -huh. So, which is what I did here. I went ahead to join the middle of the shorts together. And guys, this is what it looks like after joining the middle of the shorts together. Very simple, very straightforward, easy peasy. So the next thing is to mark out your waist, your hips, and to join the sides, which is what I have done. So I went ahead to mark out my measurement, and I joined the sides of the shorts. Okay? See, shorts, it's very easy to cut and to sew. 
and which is what I'm proving to you in this video, even though it's my sister's shirt. Okay, now for the band, I went ahead to cut out a fabric that is five inches in width. Okay, I applied my forcible interface, I weaved one side, and I folded it into two. Hmm? So, this side that is not woven now is what I'm going to attach to my waistline. Before we attach it, I went ahead to open up the back part. You guys know that the back is where the zip is going to be. I went ahead to open up the back part. It's my razor I'm using there now. Mm -hmm. All of you that don't lose it with razor, don't come for me. There are days I lose it with razor. There are days I lose it with my seam ripper. Okay? So I went ahead to lose it with my razor blade. See, my cleaner is a weapon fashion against me. She's all this noise. Bokoro, bokoro, bokoro. Okay, I've closed the window so to, to reduce the noise. Okay, now I went ahead to open up the back part. So I stopped at that point that I marked. See that point I marked that time? Yeah, I stopped. So the next thing now I went ahead to do is you see that um, zip flap, that fabric we attached. You're going to push it outwards, okay? You're going to place the band like this and you're going to join it. So, which is what I did here. I just went ahead to join the band to the waistline of this um shorts i wanted to say trouser but don't worry a trouser tutorial will be coming up really 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 soon for you guys okay so after doing this after joining it this is what we have going on here guys now the next thing i went ahead to do was to fold it like that you can see how i'm folding it i pushed the seam upwards and i folded the band and we are going to top stitch and we are going to under stitch i'm going to be saying two of them for all of you okay so which is what I went ahead to do. So I just folded it and I'm going to show you the way it's going to be when I'm joining to my sewing machine because you're going to be sewing from the front side and not the back side, okay? So as I explained, I went ahead to fold and I top I understitch. Sure you see this grammar has become wala for me. Anyways, after understitching, guys, this is what we have here. So you guys have found that stitching. This is what we have going on here. Look at what the band looks like. It's giving neatness. It's giving sweet anti. It's giving clean tailor. Mm, all the hype. Anyways, you guys. Now the next thing is to attach our zip. Do you now see why I attach this extra fabric to the back part? Okay. So the next thing now is I went ahead to change to my zip foot presser. And I attached my zip. Hmm attached my zip see attaching your zip is very simple i have a detailed tutorial on how to attach a zip but this particular tutorial i don't have it yet on this channel so i'm going to so i'm going to go ahead and film it for you guys and upload it for you guys you guys should remind me in the comment section okay next i went ahead to do was to fold the allowance i added to the seam and that is one inch sewing allowance i folded it and i just turned over the hem of this short you see if i misplace anything just know i'm hungry okay now after sewing this shirt this is what it looks like it was almost time to go and baby this shirt now i was busy here doing video with a shirt that is not for me it's for my sister anyways this is what it looks like hope you enjoyed the video make sure to like make sure to share make sure to subscribe if you're watching from facebook make sure you follow my page make sure you share make sure you like and i'll see you in my next video thanks for watching bye and rate my dancing skills oh yeah bye bye bye